Grown black folks talk. Good afternoon, everybody. I think I'm going to call this one Judge Moore, Stupidity Squared, and Enough Already. I really try not to make these videos where I'm really frustrated and upset because I try to help, but I make it just a little bit out of pocket today because I'm like really mad. And I'm really mad, not just at Judge Moore and but th there's just, as grown black folks, there's there's some housekeeping that we need to do relative to how we allow this kind of perversion to continue, not just maybe, you know, in Alabama, but all around us. Let me explain. Uh, there's this gentleman, <laughs> I'm being very polite, who's running for Senate in Alabama. His name is Roy Moore. He's a judge. He's been sitting on the bench, like, making legal decisions that may involve black people and a bunch of white people as well. But I'm just saying, this is a man who's making legal decisions. He has been entrusted with that kind of responsibility. He's been accused, and I just say accused, he's not been convicted, of sexually abusing some young girls between the ages of 14 and 18, which would make everybody under 18, that would be statutory rape. So this would make him, if the accusations are true, a sexual predator. Now, I don't know if any of these accusations are true yet. But I do know what he said to justify what he supposedly didn't do. And this is where, as a Christian and as a black woman, I'm too through. I'm trying to stay calm, folks. He had the audacity to, to explain that, you know, since Joseph was an adult carpenter and since Mary was a teenager and they came together and were the parents of Jesus, there was nothing illegal and immoral about that. So what's all the fuss? You know, in order to make a Christian point, you're not supposed to be cussing folk out. But let me explain why that is like the most stupidity squared blasphemy. Now you have to understand, Alabama is firmly within the Southern Bible Belt. These are the kind of people that seem to have some memory that there was a Christian nation where America honored God, and if we could just get back there, we could make America great again. That's why they turned out for President Donald Trump. But let me explain to you. Apparently, Judge Moore, although he is a judge who is supposed to have great understanding of issues, missed a couple Sunday school lessons and has never read his Bible between Matthew and Luke. And I have to question his Christianity because he misses the main point. Joseph was not the father of Jesus. You could look at it in Matthew and in Luke. And let me clear up some other nonsense that I hear about. Well, God was a rapist because of Mary. Okay, let me clear up all this nonsense at one time. This is how it went down. You can read the first couple chapters of Matthew and then read the first couple chapters of Luke to get all the details. If you look back far enough at history, you'll see more of it in Matthew and Luke than anywhere else. You will see that God had promised to send a savior through the line of the Jewish people and predicted in Isaiah that he would be virgin born. In other words, there would be no sexual contact. So one day the angel Gabriel was dispatched to let a young woman named Mary know that she had been the chosen one and that the Holy Spirit would overshadow her, and that God himself would make in her womb, would clothe himself in flesh, and become not only the Son of God, but the Son of Man. No sexual contact. By the way, Mary agreed to this. She was not forced to do it. If you read it in Luke, she agrees to the plan. She was not manipulated. She was told exactly what God was intending to do, and she said she would go along. There was no sexual contact. Joseph in Matthew is told that his fiancee, Mary, so again, this is not just some older man having sex with some underage girl. They're engaged to be married legally under Jewish law. Is told that his fiancee is going to come up pregnant, but she is not has not been seeing another man, but that the holy thing that is being conceived in her is the Son of God. And so Joseph is told in Matthew that this is what is going on, and that he is not to have sex with Mary until she 
brings forth the Son of God. So the Bible says clearly, he did not know her as his wife until she had brought forth the Lord Jesus Christ. This is in Matthew. So this is what Judge Moore has done. He has twisted the fundamental story of the Christian faith in order to justify his alleged sexual molestation of young girls. He's from the Bible Belt, y'all. He's from the area of the country where you can believe that you had a Christian nation 200 years ago, where it was all right for some of your Christian foreparents or some of the people your Christian foreparents admired to rape, murder, and beat their slaves Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, get their church on on Sunday where they never ever open to Ephesians 6, where in Ephesians 5 it tells, well, in Ephesians 5 it talks about how all human relationships would go, and they would talk about how masters, well, slaves were supposed to obey their masters, but no one ever turned the page to find out how masters were not supposed to mistreat their slaves. They went to a church where nobody saw in the book of Philemon how the Apostle Paul told a Christian master that he is to treat his Christian slave like he would treat the Apostle Paul. They never went to James chapter 5 where God promised that he would take the rich who were having people read reap their fields without paying them, and burn up their riches with fire. They never read James 5. It would have spared them the Civil War had they known. But they went to the church house all right. And then they got on out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and continued raping and torturing and murdering and working their slaves to death. But this is supposed to be the Christian nation. Represented in 2017, just before the holiday season, by Judge Moore who wants to be in the U.S. Senate making decisions on things like health care and taxes for all of us. Is this what we're going to end up in the time machine, making America great again? Is this the idea? Can you tell I'm not impressed? Not at all. But for us grown black people, I've given you your history lesson and your current events. This is the part that makes me really mad. You don't have to go to Alabama. We don't even have, I'm going to take you on a tour by Lithonia, Georgia, where allegedly you have five young men who have been turned out that are saying that their pastor, Eddie Long, did this and gave detail, which he never bothered to refute. And he had a church with 20,000 members in it. 5,000 Negroes stayed. And he did, he, how long did he sit down while this is being investigated and worked on? One week. Just one week. He was still pastor there when he died, January 15th this year. You have, I'm going to be fair here, let's talk about a woman so-called pastor. Then you have Miss, then you have Juanita Bynum. Here she is introducing Kundalini, which is a Eastern spiritual practice that that believes by doing certain chants and certain movements, you can bring a snake spirit from the coil of your spine, up the coil of your spine, through your chakras, up to your head. Has anybody been to enough Sunday school to know that the old serpent is the devil? But we're okay with this as black people. I don't really have to go that far. I live in San Francisco. Now let me say here for the record, publicly, thank you to my past. Pastor Keith L. McNeil, who teaches the word of God and insists that we learn how to know the word for ourselves. But I've been around San Francisco long enough to know I don't have to go to Lithonia. I don't have to go to Alabama. We've got enough stuff going on in our pulpits and our choirs and our music departments right here in San Francisco. And we just keep going with the foolishness. We keep going along with this mess. We keep, and we, here's what we don't understand about Judge Moore or the church house next door. Our children and young people have to now grow up in an environment where they are getting their cues from perverts. And we grown black folks seem to be okay with this. We can see it in Judge Moore in Alabama. Are we looking around our own neighborhoods, our own church houses, our own organization, and are we justifying this stuff going on around us? Now, I'm probably going to have to bust some stuff out in my local area 
if some trends continue. I really, because I know too many young people and they're trying to find their way. And we, if we justify people naming the name of Christ and being just stupidity squared blasphemers, then they're not, they're not going to be able to find their way. And you know what? They're going to blame the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I don't care that much about any particular preacher out there. I do love my own pastor, but I'll tell you who I love more. I do love the Savior of my soul. I'm sick and tired of Christian people walking around blaspheming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with this foolishness. So, as we deplore the behavior of a judge more, we need to take a cold, hard look at our own and look at our own culture and stop covering the foolishness. Enough already. It's enough, grown black folk. We have got to shut this stuff down in our own communities. So our young people have a chance to become functioning adults who know how to handle their business and so that the, if you are a Christian, so that the name of your own savior is not blasphemed as we continue to cover for this stuff. Okay. I've got some real hot ginger tea brewing because I need to calm down. But I'm passionate about this because enough is enough. All right. Y'all have a good day. Goodbye.